Hey, this is a really quick video guiding you through how to install Windows 10 on your Synology NAS virtual machine. So first of all, you will need to um, get Windows installation file creator app. So if you uh, Google uh, download Windows 10, you, this is where you're going to uh, be going to microsoft.com uh, software download Windows 10. Then what you need to do is create ISO file. And then afterwards, it's going to be downloading all the files and creating this ISO file. Then you will need to copy this ISO file to your Synology. It doesn't matter which location. If you have mapped your Synology drive, you can just copy and paste. Uh, if you haven't done that, you can log into DSM and um, use the browser to actually drag and drop that uh, ISO file somewhere in any folder you remember later on to use. So once you have copied, uh, that ISO file, you can go to Virtual Machine Manager on DSM, uh, click Create, go to Machine uh, with the Machine Create, and then uh, choose Microsoft Windows. Uh, then fo going forward, you're going to choose which volume you, you want to use, uh, how many CPU cores um, it would be recommended to have two actually on our Windows. Memory would be recommended three gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and so default uh, graphics card and, and, and the rest of it. Uh, storage space depends on, on your use case. In this case, we're going to choose 100 gigabytes. Um, network as well, built in uh, ports from the Synology. This, they will have access to that. And then um, what you will need to do is, in this step, uh, choose this ISO file. But, so when it's going to be, virtual machine is going to be booting. There's going to be no Windows at that point, so it will need to find this uh, Windows installation file. So we can choose ISO file for boot up. That's where we're going to set, uh, choose it. Uh, additional things you can keep this Synology VMM guest to a secondary uh, ISO. Auto start, you can set that as yes. And bias, keep default, keyboard default. Uh, if you want USB access uh, from your NAS, then you, you can enable that. Uh, then you can set uh, user rights for uh, admin or another user who, if you want someone to have um, ability to restart, reboot this uh, virtual machine, so you can put uh, th th those rules there. And then it um, can go through the settings you have chosen. And uh, if you take power on virtual machine after creation, it means that after we have finished this step, it's going to actually create this virtual machine and, and boot it up. So. Um, then you will see actually list uh, of virtual machines you have created. In this case, it's going to be only one. Um, if you forgot something, you can always edit virtual machine, double click. Um, and in my case, I'm going to choose this um, ISO file. Uh, I'll mount it again as I, I forgot. And um, I chose boot from CD ROM. Um, so it's going to look like this ISO file is going to be mounted as a CD ROM. So it's going to, when it's going to boot, it's going to look for this installation file there and then um, just go uh, go back again to the list of virtual machines go click connect and then you'll be taken to a separate tab separate page where you can have a view of virtual machine booting so if it doesn't for some some, some example doesn't pick up um, this um, installation file you can just click on uh, the options on the left side and click uh, control delete which is supposed to restart the uh, system as you would have a pc in your case so it will be reboot and, and jump into installation mode then it will pick up the window and then all you need to do is go through the wizard you should be familiar with this uh, uh, sort of things so you will be choosing um, what uh, language you want to use and and you will end up with activating Windows. If you don't have a key, just simply click, I don't have a product key, so it's gonna be in the corner all the time, just reminding you to activate Windows, but you will be able to use the Windows. And um, that's about it. You, From that point on, you'll be uh, able to connect to your virtual machine, either locally or across the internet, um, and it's always gonna be available there, uh, as long as there's internet somewhere. Well, but to connect. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always go to NAS Compares, fill the form on the right hand side, or send an email to info NAS Compares. And uh, if your question will be interesting, we can uh, shoot a video and help others as well. Cheerio.